Hi, and welcome to this discussion of pre-production character prototypes and how to evolve these beings from script to sketches to artificial intelligence modeling and animation, and eventually, the casting of real-life actors and actresses to play what you once only envisioned in your mind. Up front, I have to state that this tutorial is designed mainly for creators who are attempting to utilize AI animation in order to realize projects that otherwise would be cost prohibitive. And, ethically, this is not a means to instruct you in how to pull off some misbegotten, uncanny valley endeavor to replace writers, actors, directors, and set and costume designers. Besides, in all practicality, at this stage in the technology's development, I personally wouldn't recommend, either technically or artistically, attempting an elaborate task like creating a feature-length motion picture. But if you are trying to give your audience an idea of what your film or series episode might ideally look like when it's in production, then sit back and enjoy. Aside from using AI to generate code or other app-driven functionality, when using it to create artwork, it's really important to discern the intention of you, the creator, first. If you are using AI to create a one-off funny picture, deep fake meme, or a parody song, this probably will not be of much help. But if you are a serious writer or filmmaker who dreams of making their vision realized on the big or small screen, and is only using AI to push your projects forward past scripts, series and film guides, pitch decks, and promotional posters, then let's move on. In my case, long before I ever generated a single character image on an AI-assisted platform, I'd sketched hundreds of characters that were depicted in my award-winning and multi-nominated screenplays. It probably didn't hurt that I have an art school degree. But if you don't, what matters most is what you see in your mind. And in the end, that's really what creativity is all about. Obviously, if and when you get to the casting phase of your film or series, all of this may become instantly moot as you fall in love with a talented actor that changes everything you ever thought about the character he or she is portraying, and you'll be overjoyed to move forward with them from that point on. But let's assume that you're not at that point and you want to promote your work past the word on the page to something more visual. In the before time, the choice was to move from screenplay text to graphic designer or to the creation of an animatic or CG animation. These were wonderful for creating mock-ups of movie posters, but maybe more primary pre-production illustrations. Hell, the original Star Wars was almost single-handedly designed by legendary illustrator Ralph McQuarrie. Other greats like Sid Mead were responsible for evolving the realities of Blade Runner and the like envisioning the architecture, vehicles, and costuming of the script's characters. These were essential, especially when creating a science fiction or fantasy world that appeared similar, yet dramatically different from the real world. I think that criteria still holds. And if you have an award-winning short film script featuring two characters that are more or less described adequately enough that any reader will get it, then elaborate settings, created technology, unique costumes, and character appearances probably do not require hundreds of hours of AI animations. I say hundreds of hours because I would estimate that for every 10 seconds of finished film clip you use in a trailer, you will probably take several hours wrestling and vectoring various AI programs against one another in order to force the algorithm to conform to what you see in your mind, or at least close enough. After that, voice dubbing, film and sound editing, etc. will add even more sweat equity into this process. Several AI companies have gotten better about directly turning a black and white pencil sketch into a flesh and blood color image. And so you may not even need to upload a color image to end up with a lifelike AI version of the character. Regardless, I think the best way to start is by taking your sketch, drawing, animatic, or CG character and upload them into a program such as Art Breeder. This is a highly manipulatable app that allows the user to tweak specific parameters of the character's still image appearance in regard to face shape, features, gender, race, and even emotions. As an example, let's take a look at one of my characters that first appeared in a script way back in 2011 and was envisioned soon after in a series of sketches and animatics that later appeared in a promotional documentary designed to market the series that featured the character. Ironically, this DVD featured table reads read by actors, and equally ironically, the actress who read for the character in question bore a remarkable physical similarity to the previously drawn illustrations of the character. Obviously, this sort of happenstance can easily flavor the future images you might create, as in the case with this character. Hestrathus Hestra Lattice, 
a sister of the Sothian faith from our first epic space opera series, Partisan Earth. And as you can see, these original sketches and animatics are not so dissimilar from the appearance of the actress. The next move is to create a consistent still image for the character. I have found that Dream Studio is very good at creating character stills, as were some of the older models of Runway AI. Once you have a series of composite images, it's time to start animating. Once again, the older models of Runway were good about base animation. However, their dubbing is somewhat shaky, with the character's face, well, just looking ugly when speaking. Hedra AI is really onto something as far as emotional quality goes, but the movement tends to only be in the face with the background remaining still. Also, you will generally see some artifacts in low definition distortion, as well as some widening of the image. I've come to rely on Kling AI more and more, and they are moving fast in the cinematic creation arena. Also, their dubbing is spot on most of the time, though not always. One problem you will definitely encounter is image consistency. The AI often will change some element of costuming, makeup, and even the eye color of the character for no apparent reason. Even when you have the same still image inputs and the same written prompt, you may suddenly have some element randomly change, thus often rendering the clip useless. If you think through these problems, you can often find your way around these dilemmas with film editing by simply zooming in or cutting away before or after the inconsistency appears on screen. Once you have a clip that you really like, you have to have all of the following clips match the details of the initial clip unless the clip is the only time the character is going to appear in your video. It is twice as hard to have two characters speaking to one another and have both remain consistent all of the time. When doing this, Creating every 10 second clip can feel like a crazy dice roll, and you may run out of credits before you complete the sequence to your satisfaction. So let's say you have dialogue written to accompany the clips. The obvious choice for AI voice creation is Eleven Labs, though Jenny by Lovo is useful as well. In Hestra's case, I cloned the actress's voice in order to create a stable version of the voice model, including the mid-Atlantic and slightly Anglo-Indian accent that the actors sort of came up with while performing the aforementioned table read in 2012. I would be errant to not mention that these sound clips might need editing in programs like Audacity or Adobe Encore, let alone within the audio panel of whatever film editing software you use. Regardless, if you have one minute of dialogue recorded, you will need at the barest minimum six solid clips at 10 seconds each to achieve this. Of course, you also need the clips to visually work well in sequence, and this may take many re-renders in order to end up with your final six. With editing in DaVinci Resolve, Adobe Premiere, Sony Vegas, Apple's Final Cut, or Avid, you can enhance the visual consistency from clip to clip with color grading, LUTs, or lookup tables, and various filters. Add sound effects, background music, and voila! You have a clip that can be part of a short or cinematic trailer that you can use to promote your awesome new series or feature film. But don't take my word for it. Why don't we let a finished Hestra tell you about herself in her own words. Hello, person from the world of the ancestors. My name is Hestrathis, Hestrathis Latis, but my friends call me Hestra. I was born in Nam Kaifer on Sothis, of course, to my parents, Ina Latis and Kolchen Viaran. My father was married once before to a woman named Gia Kenna, so I have a half-brother named Eamon, Eamon Kenna. He is an imperial designate in New Daro on Ta'akin. We weren't raised together, so it's not as close a relationship as I'd like, but it is what it is. Anyway, I came to the Temple of the Seven Sisters at the age of nine years after my parents were, well, there was an accident on the road. But I guess you could say that I found a new family in the temple with other sisters like Vigera and Merofina, as well as some of the priests and laypersons. I guess you could say that I always had a feeling for the faith, what with my visions and all that. And all in all, it worked out pretty well, until it didn't. I really hope that this narration and the accompanying sample of images helps you move forward with all of the visual tools you can utilize to realize your projects in the pre-production phase. Certainly look around and try out any number of AI services, as well as editing programs in order to see which one fits best with your requirements, work style, and your objectives. Good luck expanding your artistic palette 
and working with this burgeoning new technology in order to create more effective art that will ideally help you get your projects off the ground. See you next time. Bye.